Okay, so today we have got a Ford Everest. This is a 2020 model, and we are fitting a Red Arc Tow Pro Elite brake controller, and this is the V3, uh, which is the, the latest model out. And I uh, just want to show you where to put the dial and where to put the unit and where to run the wires. So hopefully it helps you out and gives you a bit more confidence to, to tackle it yourself because anyone could really do this with a little bit of with a little bit of knowledge and patience and a bit of confidence, then yeah, you can do it. So, I've already made a start. So here's where the dial goes. Just in there by the gear shifter. Reason being, there's no spare blanks. This is a top spec model, so there's no blanks there. Normally, this isn't here, so you can mount it into this trim, which makes life a lot easier. But when you can't, same on the Ford Rangers and the uh, BC50s, you put the dial there. Really easy. Use a little bit of a trim tool and you pry up this section here. Just give it a little tease and then there's clips there and there all the way around and it will suddenly click off. And then you can lift that section up just to make sure you've got clearance there. And no real measurements. Basically just get a clear spot between your off-road four-wheel drive system dial and your shifter and drill a pilot hole three mil make sure you clear everything down there and then work your way up um, from three mil to six mil to eight mil then to ten mil is your final drill bit uh, reason you step it up is so you don't crack or fracture any of the trim and it's just easier so go up to a 10 mil, then underneath, I don't know if you're gonna see it, there's little fins, little flaps, and you just get a little Stanley blade and just cut the flaps off that stick downwards, just so the dial can sit flush underneath. And then just do your nut up, make sure you get it nice and center, like so. And then that's the dial done. With the cable, just plug it straight in there. And I normally, start here where you can lift it out and push the connector of the dial cable and push upwards as much as you can and then you can reach in and pick it up there and plug it straight in now for your control box they sit right behind this trim here where your knees are in the driving position i don't know if you can see it there there's a little metal bar and we normally cable tie it to that but so if I show you a different position hopefully you can see that there's that bar there and we're gonna cable tie straight to that so I'll we'll do that now and then I'll show you once it's all done okay so the unit's now fitted I'll just put a torch there so you can see there it is right there sitting on top of that bar and we've cable tied through the holes that are already there in the unit and cable tied that through and now that's nice and tight now you see that cable or conduit running across that's our main battery supply I'll show you where pick that up from so there's our fuse there I like to use circuit breakers normally, 30 amp circuit breaker, but we don't have any, so I'm going to use an inline fuse holder with a 30 amp fuse. I haven't joined it yet because we uh, we want to get everything else installed and then the final bit is to connect your power cable. Now on the Fords, you want to make sure you either go onto this terminal or that terminal. Or this one. Or that one basically because you don't want to go onto this one or that one because that is already fused so you want to go direct to the battery step post and this bracket is direct so you can go onto either of them okay that runs round and there's a little grommet down the back I don't know if you can see that down there and there's like a little nipple thing you cut off with a blade don't use a uh, drill cut that off and then you can feed the cable straight through behind the 
Dog box. And you can see the cable running through that. And then up round. I haven't cable tied it up yet because I just wanted to show you guys. And then it just runs across. There's a wiring piece there. And then straight through the, the tunnel, basically, over the other side. And then you can't actually see it because I've hit it. Here it is. It comes up there straight across. Now, here's the wiring on that four pin plug that plugs into the, the control unit. The earth I've already done and I've done it here, which is your fuse box. There's a earth stud there. Basically, there's already a nut there that holds this plastic on. I like to put my earth point over the top of that nut and then add another nut. And that's a 10 mil nut and I've used a nylock one so it won't come loose. And um, yeah, if you don't want to put it there, there is an earth point there as well. Entirely up to you. Then there's that power cable. I've already joined. The join is there and that's going to all be cable tied up with more conduit. I just wanted to show you how I've done it. Then the blue is your brake controller output, the trigger. And I've used five mil blue cable just to match it. And then this is your brake light switch or trigger. And I've used a three mil red with white trace. Now these two are gonna be running down to the back to the brake controller, uh, sorry, to the, the trailer plug itself and going into there. And I'll show you that in a second. Um, we've already pulled this trim off and we've already pulled this trim off so this is the the kick trim this comes off first you can literally pull this off with your hands and guaranteed that little notch there is for these lugs guaranteed they always stay in the vehicle side onto the body so don't forget to pull these out and it's really easy. Try and do this one-handed. Right, so that's it. Just pop them off and then they just slot back into the trim. So just don't forget to put them back on once it's done. And we're gonna run the cable along with this factory harness all the way down to the back and I'll show you where the grommet is to go outside to the trailer plug. Okay. So, we've done our joins. We've extended that blue and red cable for your brake trigger and your brake light switch trigger. I've put this in conduit just to protect the cable. This is all gonna be cable tied along with this main harness. Now, this is a little B pillar where the seat belt is. All you have to do is pull the rubber trim out and these, just have little clips in. You just pop that out and bring that out to the end so you can feed the cable through right against here. And literally I'll just push the cable through and then I was able to grab it the other side. Now this trim is a prick to, to get off. Just take your time and just keep on clipping it and it clipped up like that. And I was able to pull this out the way and there's my cable there. And then I've just fed it across behind these little lugs on this end trim. And basically to get it through to the, the back end is I started here and I had a little chaser. So I use this rigid bit of cable. This is actually the uh, fiber optic cable and it's great because you can manipulate it make it go where you want but it's rigid so it will feed through easily without folding up on itself now you can use cable ties you can use um, a metal coat hanger um, just something that's a little bit rigid so you can feed it through easier and uh, yes yeah, so I fed it in from this side and just kept working my way it took a bit of time obviously you pop this out the way got a little screw here that 
I can't find right now. Um, unscrew that, it looks like that. Unscrew that out and then just pop this out. There's just clips. As you can see, clip there. Can't see any of those clips. And that just gave me enough access to see through. And then when I fed my green chaser through the snake, um, I was able to grab it here and here it is there and then obviously i just take this onto the end of it and pull it through now for the next section i need to go down and out because there's my trailer plug right there with all the cobwebs so i want to get to the wiring that goes into it now underneath here i hope you can see Right there. There's a little grommet there for the main wiring harness to run through. I've just put a little slit in it with uh, with a blade, and I fed my chaser upwards and just kept rotating it and feeding it around. It took a bit of jiggling around to uh, to get it, and then I was able to grab it here because there's quite a lot going on behind there, and. Um, just took a little bit of time so it's just a little bit of patience just keep wriggling it two or three attempts and you'll get it and uh yes yeah, so i'm just about to tape on my harness there and then feed it down and just make sure it's not caught on anything and i will cable tie it where i can and um and i'll show you the next bit okay so the cable's now ran through i'll just show you so there it is there running through that little conduit so trying to get focus there you go and then it runs round and here is our main harness factory plug and that goes down to your trailer socket right there that to that so what you want to do is slice this conduit on the main harness and pull all the wiring out and then you'll see the blue which is what you want to tap into and this has been capped off ready for a brake controller to be joined into so that basically we're going to solder so we're trying to do this one-handed uh the blue to the blue straight in done now for the red gets a little bit more involved red arc actually specify this to use one of these this is a called a one-way diode this is a six amp and basically we need to put that in the brake light circuit wire to stop any kind of back feed so this side we join we cut this cable in half and we join that part which goes back to the vehicle on this side then the cut part that goes down to the trailer plug we join on this side where the stripe is along with that so these two join there reason being is it stops any kind of back feed back into the vehicle from the controller and when you apply the push button option to apply brakes without pressing the actual foot brake it won't actually apply the the vehicle brake lights and upset the the control units um so that's just a safety precaution a lot of the modern cars we we fit these um just to to make sure there's no back feed and it won't upset any of the stability control etc whilst towing so i'll get that in next and uh, then I'll, I'll show you how i've done it I'll also put a link up and um, show you a picture of Red Arc of how they uh, the, the diagram of how to wire in a diode. You can pick these up from J Car or any electrical shop, and um, yeah, they're like two bucks. But always use one of these if you can. All right, I'll show you what we do next. Okay, so now we're all joined up. So there's our flow that we ran in, soldered and heat shot straight onto the the wire ready to go and then this is our brake light wire going down to the trailer plug so we've done cut it in half put one side on that side of the diode and one where the stripe is we've put our brake controller trigger 
and the one that goes to the the trailer plug on the other side. So it can't can flow downwards and it can't flow back up into the vehicle harness. That makes sense. And uh, yeah, so we're just gonna tape all this up, put this conduit on, tape it all up, cable tie it, make sure it's all nice and neat, and uh, then we'll get to the test. Okay, I've just finished all the wiring at the back and um, connected the uh, the power to the battery. And as you can see, lights up blue, we've got power, that's all good. Now, just wanted to, to say, because this Everest has the AEB braking system, the automatic braking system, this is how you do it on them, on that version. So it's 2019 onwards. Everest's so you always pick up the power for your brake light switch um, trigger from the actual trailer plug and use a one-way diode to stop it feeding back you can buy ready-made harnesses but they're like four or five hundred dollars um, but as you can see you can just do it yourself using a one-way diode now if you don't have or uh, automatic braking system on either a Ford Ranger or an Everest, then you need to not run your red cable down to the trailer socket and use that diode. You need to just directly connect it to the brake light switch, which is that purple. Can't really get focus, but it's that purple which is our trigger. There you go, when we press the pedal, it triggers. So if you don't have, it's called AEB system, then you need to pick it up off of the brake light switch. And if you do, you need to pick it up off of the trailer plug itself, as I've just shown in the video. Okay, so just make sure you which version you have of the Ford Ranger or Everest and then use that appropriately. Uh, reason being is when you've got automatic um, braking, it works differently on the modules and in an emergency when it automatically brakes, it may not apply the trailer brakes. You just need to make sure. So basically, if you don't have AEB, automatic braking pick it up off the switch if you do pick it up off the trailer plug hope that makes sense and uh, yeah hope this helps everyone and um, gives you the confidence to attack it yourself and you can save some money doing it uh, please like and subscribe if you want to see more videos and leave in the comments if there's anything else you want me to to show you and uh, I'll do my best to do it cheers